So I saw that Indian came out with the Sport Chief and I said to myself, hey, Indian made a Harley Lowrider S. Well, it's clearly their answer to compete with Harley in that category of bikes anyways. So of course I had to take a deep look at this bike and break it down for you and of course give you my thoughts. How does the Indian Sport Chief match up to the Harley Lowrider S? I really needed to know. Now, I've seen some trying to compare the Sport Chief to the Harley Lowrider ST, and I wholeheartedly disagree. You see, I test rode and reviewed the Lowrider ST last year in Santa Barbara, California, and it's more in the category of a sport touring. It has a very large fairing and windshield, an available dash stereo system with speakers and hard saddlebags. The Sport Chief is more in the category of a sport cruiser, if you will, with a very small fairing and windshield, no in-dash stereo system or speakers, and no hard saddlebags, just like the Lowrider S. So, grab your favorite beverage, and let's dive in. Welcome back, bikeaholics. Ryan Erdocker here, lawbindingbiker.com. I always thank you, that's right, you, for checking back in. Okay, so this video is not about the old Harley versus Indian BS conversations. Honestly, those sorts of attitudes just muddy the real conversation and the facts. Understand that we ride Harleys, Indians, and other metric bikes here on this channel, and we support all makes and models of motorcycles. Remember, Competition in the motorcycle marketplace is good and benefits all motorcycle enthusiasts. It pushes companies to put out their best products. Okay, let's break these bikes down in a head-to-head -head comparison. And of course, I'll give you my thoughts and opinions along the way. But before we do, make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell icon every time those are hit. Another biker joins the revolution and we'd certainly love to have you be part of it. So let's start by comparing the powertrain on these bikes. The Lowrider S is coming with the air-cooled Milwaukee 8 117 cubic inch engine, producing 81 horsepower and 125 foot-pounds of torque. While the Sport Chief has the air-cooled 116 cubic inch Thunderstroke engine, producing 79 horsepower and 120 foot-pounds of torque. And both have the six-speed transmission. Transmissions. The Lowrider S has the left side final belt drive and the Sport Chief has the same, but on the right side. So it appears the Lowrider S takes the win here. With that said, it's very little difference overall. Next, let's move into the suspension. The Lowrider S is coming with the coilover monoshock while the Sport Chief is coming with the Fox piggyback rear shocks. So the rear shock on the Lowrider S is hidden while the Sport Chief has exposed rear shocks on each side with exposed reservoirs. Now, I personally prefer the look of the exposed shocks on a bike of this category. That's why I like my 2016 Lowrider S behind me as it's a Dyna frame before they moved it to the Softail frame and my rear shocks are exposed. Now, although I really like the exposed shocks on the Sport Chief, I do find it a little less pleasing visually because of the severe angle they are installed on the bike. I wish they were more up and down, but hey, that's just my opinion. And remember, this channel is a community and I really look forward to reading your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. So the Lowrider S rear suspension has 4.4 inches of travel while the Sport Chief has four inches. Moving to the front suspension, both bikes are coming with inverted front forks and both have 5.1 inches of travel. So the suspension is really a toss up and will really depend on how it feels when riding the bikes. Now, I have not been able to test ride and review the Sport Chief to feel the suspension and rideability and we'll talk about that a bit later in this video and I'll give you my thoughts on the current state of Indian marketing efforts in comparison to Harley Davidson. One of them is winning big. So let's look at the brake setups on these bikes. Both bikes are coming with dual front disc brakes, four piston front calipers and single disc rear brakes, two piston calipers. The Sport Chief has 320 millimeter front rotors and a 300 millimeter rear rotor, while the Lowrider S has 300 millimeter front rotors and a 292 millimeter rear rotor. So both bikes are next to neck here. And if you haven't already, you really need to check out the Law Abiding Biker podcast where we talk about things like this in a lot more detail and we have a lot of fun doing it. I'll link to it in the description below. You can listen on any major podcast platform. Next, let's talk tires and wheels. Both bikes are coming with 19 inch front and 16 inch rear cast wheels. The Sport Chief is running a 130 millimeter wide front and 180 millimeter wide rear Pirelli Night Dragon tires. While the Lowrider S is running 110 millimeter front and 180 millimeter rear Michelin Scorcher tires. So next, I wanna talk about the rider setup and overall rideability of these two bikes. Now, as I stated up front, these two bikes are in the category of sport cruiser, not sport touring like the Harley Lowrider ST. They'll both be fun to ride the twisties with the Lowrider S having a bit more lean angle at 31.3 degrees and the Sport Chief coming in just behind it at 29.5 degrees lean angle. 
hey, I'll take all the lean angle I can get when I'm riding the corners hard. And the Sport Chief has 0.2 inches more of ground clearance than the Lowrider S. Both bikes are coming with mid-controls for that more aggressive riding position, and both bikes come in with the classic West Coast style handlebars. Now, the Sport Chief comes with standard 6-inch risers, while the Lowrider S has standard 4-inch risers. Of course, the risers on both bikes can easily be altered with different size risers, both OEM and aftermarket. The Lowrider S is a lighter bike wet weighing in at 679 pounds in comparison to the Sport Chief weighing in at 685 pounds for a six pound difference. But we must consider those are wet weights and the Lowrider S enjoys a larger five gallon fuel tank while the Sport Chief only has a four gallon fuel tank. So the Lowrider S is not only lighter but holds a gallon more fuel at about six pounds of weight and who doesn't want a bigger fuel tank and fewer stops. So let's dive into rider safety features and technology. So the Sport Chief is coming with three ride modes, which are Sport, Standard, and Tour. And the Lowrider S is coming with no ride modes, so that's a win for the Sport Chief if you like the ride modes. I am hoping that the Sport Chief allows you to completely disable the ride modes, as I often do when riding bikes with these modes. I know when I reviewed the Indian Challenger, I was able to disable the ride modes completely. The Sport Chief is coming standard with ABS and traction control, while it's an optional add-on for the Lowrider S. With that said, the base price for the Sport Chief is $18,999 in comparison to the Lowrider S, which starts at $18,199. If you add the ABS and traction control, the Lowrider S comes in at $19,349, which is $350 more than the Sport Chief. But remember, these bikes are close in price, but you give and take on certain things. The Sport Chief is coming with a four inch touchscreen ride command, which allows Bluetooth, smartphone, and headset connectivity with some integrated navigation. Honestly, these small displays coming on some Harleys and Indians are kind of useless to me because of their size and limited capabilities. I'd rather just connect directly to my smartphone for everything, which is attached securely to my handlebars with the Biker Gripper, of course, the best cell phone motorcycle mount in the world and available only in the Law Abiding Biker store. I'll link to it in the description below. Now, I'd only use the small display for the ride modes and other trip and engine information anyways. The Lowrider S is only coming with a four inch analog tack and some basic digital functionality. So. I'd say the Sport Chief wins in this area. And remember, this is a community here on this channel. We really wanna hear your thoughts and comments. What do you think of the 2023 Indian Chief Sport versus the Lowrider S? And what do you particularly like about one over the other? I look forward to reading them in the description below. All right, just real quick, we'll get right back into your video. As you can imagine, a lot of man hours and expenses go into keeping this channel going strong. Of course, there is a way you can support us by becoming a patron member. I'll link to it in the description below. By becoming a member, there are benefits such as t-shirts and stickers. You get access to the private Facebook group, which is a troll-free zone. It really is nothing but bikers helping and connecting with other bikers. You get access to store discount codes, podcasts early, live video broadcasts, and chat. Of course, access to those premium videos up on request. And don't forget the ride, meetup, and events. We really appreciate you considering becoming a member. Let's get back into your video. Now, let's talk about lighting and its setup on the bikes. The Sport Chief is coming with LED lighting all the way around, while the Lowrider S is still coming with old incandescent signals, but LED headlight and taillight. I have dog Harley for this on other bikes in the past. I'm gonna do it again. Come on Harley, it's 2023 and standard LED lighting all the way around should not even be a question anymore. I do like that any amount of the front signals to the forks instead of the bars like the Lowrider S. I think it's a much more cleaner look, which is why I did that on my 2016 Dyna Lowrider S. On the rear, the Lowrider S has a larger LED taillight on the fender and two signals out to the sides of the rear tire, while the Sport Chief does not have a larger brake taillight on the fender and just the two combined brake tail light signals out to each side of the rear tire. And although having no large brake light on the rear fender looks clean, I'd say as far as safety goes, one might prefer the separate larger brake light on the fender as getting rear-ended on a motorcycle is something you want to avoid at all costs. But much of that is going to be personal preference. In the lighting category, I'd say Indian takes it with the LED all the way around stock and the cleaner looking fork mounted front signals, which by the way, can easily be moved on a Lowrider S. So let's move on and talk about fairing and windshields. Now, both bikes are coming with a West Coast style front fairing. The Sport Chief fairing being a little larger and coming stock with a mid-height windshield with other options available. But the Hardy does have an OEM fairing with a windshield that you can add if you want to. But that will cost you an additional $500, now making it $850 more if you also add the ABS and trash control. 
but hold your horses because as you'll find out in a moment, there's an expensive component the Lowrider S comes with that the Sport Chief does not. Now, although both fairings and windshield setups are different, I think they are both pretty cool looking in their own way, and that's definitely gonna come down to personal preference. Now, let's dive into air intakes and exhaust. The Sport Chief is coming with a two into one into two exhaust, while the Lowrider S is coming with dual exhaust with a crossover and both bikes have black pipes. I do prefer that the Lowrider S is coming with a large 90 degree high flow air intake in comparison to the Sport Chief, which is coming with a more boring looking subdued air intake. Of course, India makes an OEM replacement, 90 degree high flow air intake at a cost, of course. And if you wanna add it, it's priced at $600. So now the price of the Lowrider S equipped with the add-on ABS and trash control lowered to only $250 more than the Sport Chief. So as you can see, it's really a tit for tat with these bikes. I personally think the Sport Chief should come stock with that high flow air intake for a bike of this category. So here are a few other things we need to tie up. Both bikes are coming with blacked out powertrain components and bobbed rear fenders. And both are coming with very similar solo style seats with a high back to keep you in the saddle when you roll on that throttle. However, the Lowrider S has available add-on passenger pegs and seat for a passenger setup and we could find nothing in the Indian parts catalog to indicate that there's an OEM passenger setup for the Chief Sport. The Sport Chief is coming in four color options, those being black smoke, ruby smoke, stealth gray, and spirit blue smoke. While the Lowrider S is coming with only two paint options, those being vivid black and white sand pearl. And so as you can see, we could really go back and forth on what things the Sport Chief or Lowrider S has that the other doesn't and price out adding a particular item or feature. But at the end of the day, we found that if you make these bikes almost exactly the same with parts and features, they are really within a couple hundred dollars of each other. Now, I love my Lowrider S behind me, but I would not think twice about owning the Sport Chief if I had extra money to throw around. I really want to ride this bike and see what it's all about. Now, the other thing you really need to consider on which bike is right for you is dealership availability, support, and aftermarket parts, of course. Now, it's just a fact Indian has very few dealerships and locations in comparison to the extremely large network Hardy-Davidson has. So depending on where you live, Indian might not have anything near you. And you can literally get any aftermarket part your heart desires for a Harley from a plethora of different companies it's hard to even filter through all the aftermarket parts. So building out an Indian is just simply not as easy and many parts you get have to be OEM, which is expensive. And also the reason why Indian lists those parts when you are building out your bike at the time of purchase. And none of that is to say you should not choose an Indian, but it's certainly something you should consider depending on your needs. So earlier in the video, I told you I was gonna talk a little bit about marketing and who's winning. I will tell you by far, Hardy Davidson has been nailing it lately. With that said, I have been critical of Harley in the past. I have no problem doing that, but that was before the new CEO, Jochen Zeitz, took over. And since then, it seems he's really revamped the company uh, to include their PR and marketing department. Now, I've been afforded some great opportunities by Harley in the past several years, and what I really see Hardy Davidson doing a good job at is connecting with creators like me and getting in front of communities like you, which are their core audience. And one of the main reasons Hardy does such a good job is obviously they have the support, but also their marketing and PR department is in-house and it's not a third-party company uh, like Indian. And that's not saying that there's anything wrong with a third-party marketing company. It just seems easier to get things done and there's more support when it's actually in-house in a large organization. So we do have a direct contact with a third-party marketing company for Indian and we've been in talks with them. And I will say that our contact has been very nice. However, what we're finding is that Indian obviously is just not to the scale Hardy Davidson is um, and it's hard for them to even get us bikes to test ride and review. I would also say Indian marketing can do a much better job at getting in front of certain audiences. What I mean by that is clearly, whether you like it or not, you know, Indian is a smaller company than Hardy Davidson and obviously they're trying to compete with them. And so if I'm Indian or a marketer at Indian, uh, if you believe in your product, you believe in your bikes, you would definitely want to get them in front of a channel and audience like this uh, that has 
a lot of Indian riders, but also a very large demographic of Harley Davidson riders. If you want to change minds and you want them to see your product, then these are the kind of channels you should be in front of. I do want to mention that a couple years ago, I reviewed an Indian Challenger on this channel, and to date it has like 175,000 views. So it seems to make sense that Indian should be in front of this audience. And on top of that, some of our top search results on our YouTube channel, which we can monitor, are for Indian motorcycles. So we're gonna keep working with Indian to review and test ride bikes on this channel, but if you wanna get involved, I'll put a link in the description below. It's a general contact to Indian. Let them know that uh, you want Ryan Erlacher of Law Abiding Biker to review Indian bikes on the YouTube channel. And we really hope we can get our hands on a Sport Chief for a longer term test ride and review, because you all know, I'll ride the heck out of it. All right, I'm popping a couple of videos on the screen here somewhere for you. Hopefully something useful or entertaining. Heck, maybe both. At any rate, when you're done watching videos, make sure you get out there and ride every chance you get, bikeaholics. Peace.